welcome to Tom's Aviation. I hope you enjoy the next video and subscribe. Hello, my name's uh, I'm Chief Warrant Officer 2 David Schlosser. I'm with the United States Army out of uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and I'm a uh, UH-60 Mike uh, Blackhawk pilot. And that's what we have back here is our UH-60 Mike Blackhawk. And I can uh, we'll do a little quick little walk around of the aircraft and show you some of the basic components of it. We're here at the Oshkosh Air Show up in Wisconsin. So uh, here it is. We got the Blackhawk, and just at the angle that we got right here, underneath those two bags right there, we actually have a, a chaff and a flare bucket. And now those are uh, defensive systems against missiles that are fired at the aircraft, right? So the ones that are pointed up towards the rotor system is your chaff to break radar locks, and the one that's pointed down are your flares to guide heat-seeking missiles away from the aircraft, right? Yep. Yeah, and then you got some antennas on the back for GPS and different comm radios that we have as well. Up top, we got like our SATCOM and stuff like that. You got the rotor system on the top. This uh, aircraft weighs about 16,000 pounds right, right here as it sits, uh -huh. and it can lift up to 22,000 pounds total as its gross weight. So, you know, we can carry uh, 11 crew members in the back if we go, go keep going around a little bit. You can carry a, 11 people in the back here. You got eight seats right here, and then three more up here. And then you got two seats for the crew chiefs or the maintainers of the aircraft, all right? And then you got the two pilot seats up front right here. Uh, some other things that we do, you have these little uh, rappel rings right here for people that, that are gonna rappel out of the aircraft. Yep, so we can uh, take soldiers, we can either drop them in the field and they can just get out and then we'll take off. You can fast rope out of the aircraft and then you can rappel out of the aircraft and we also do para jumps as well. Okay, so you, you can get up, up to 10,000 feet, kick them out and then have their parachutes and yeah, a ton, ton of fun. So we're just here about moving guys around, right? You can see our turb one of our turbine engines up above here. They give uh, 2,000 horsepower per, per render, yep. Yep, so we got tons of power in this aircraft. It can usually, on most days, fly on one engine if we really needed it to. We always fly with two, but if one dies, you know that you can fly around safely with just sure, one. Sure. And what is the, uh, uh, the fuel rate on that? Yeah, so we could burn. We burn normally anywhere from 800 to a thousand, or maybe 1,100 pounds per hour. Yeah, it was usually turbines are measured by pounds per hour, and we're around a thousand pounds per hour. Yep, and this aircraft holds like. 23 to 2400 pounds of fuel so we got about two hours of flight <laughs> yeah looking at this strut right here in the wheel all right and then here's the gunner's window right here that's the mount where you would put the uh the 240 hotel machine gun right here well yeah we got the policy we can take a closer look on the other side yep okay yeah so we have uh, four main rotor blades. We have a diameter of 53.8 feet. So it's quite a large diameter and the aircraft itself is almost 70 feet long. Uh, the blades are made out of, I think it's carbon fiber on the outside and the inside it's a honeycomb mesh and then a titanium uh, like rod that goes through the middle of it, right? And no, no, I know that you don't bump into each other, right? With yeah, trim tabs. Oh, okay. Yeah, trim tabs really for will. balancing the blades. You always need to balance the blades out. Yep. Uh, Yep, and then we got a tip cap right here that helps uh, reduce uh, wingtip vortices right, right. on the aircraft. So that's something that they added to it. Reverse winglet. Yeah, essentially. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. What is the uh, rotational 200 RPMs per minute? Yep. Honestly, I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I honestly don't. I'll edit that. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but in the front of the aircraft here, we have uh, our. These are like our cameras that, that find IR threats, right? They look for a UV plume right there. And then these these are got like an antenna in it that track uh, radar threats, right? Okay. So those are the systems that actually detect it. And then those the chaff and the flare in the back actually yeah, fire. It's the one thing to be a pilot, but then you have to know all these other yep. things. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. So we're from the, the 101st at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. This is Old Abe, right? The Eagle that's at the, at the 101st. So, yeah. That, that is absolutely yeah, fantastic. We, we focus on air assaulting at, at the 101st especially. So that's picking up troops, bringing them behind enemy lines, and then dropping them off so they can go assault key targets and take key terrain. A lot of it has to do with like artillery and stuff like sure. setting up artillery bases and stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And then uh, how many uh, hours 
I have about 450 hours in this aircraft. Uh, you get about 160 out of flight school. Uh, it takes about 18 months to go through Army flight school. A uh, ton of fun, great, great time. Uh, all you do is go to academics and you fly, and it's like, it's, it's terrible when you're going through it because it's a lot of work, but then you get done, you're like, it was actually really awesome. Because you get to fly every day, pretty much. We can take a quick look at the cockpit. You know, basic mechanics of a helicopter, right? You got your cyclic, got your collective, and you got your paddles, right? The collective, or the cyclic, uh, changes the pitch of the blades and that direction that you put it, so you can go forward, backwards, left and right. The collective collectively changes the pitch of all the blades at the same time so that you can go up and down and it creates more power to go up and less to go down. And then the pedals change the pitch of the tail rotor so that you can yaw left and right. Bobby, uh, yep, so up there is mainly like our generators and our batteries and we got our energy power control levers and our fuel. Those are all circuit breakers on the side there. There's the rotor brake right here. Okay. And then on the bottom here you have your flight control computers. We have our MFDs, flight director, uh, our radios, and then like our passive defensive systems over there in the back and like the backup systems. So uh, I was an infantryman for the, my first eight years in the Army. Uh, it was a great job, but I really wanted to take that opportunity to learn a skill set through the Army that's really going to benefit me on the outside. So that's why I put in a, a warrant officer packet to go fly Blackhawks in the Army. It was a great experience. All of the training's done at Fort Rucker, Alabama. And uh, at Fort Rucker, Alabama, it's uh, you go through your basic tactical nav, you do your day, your night, your NVG flying. So we're actually flying this thing at night with NVGs. It's a blast. It's an experience that you can't really get anywhere else, honestly. Uh, especially since like they're paying me to do all of this. It costs about a million dollars to put someone through flight school. So it's a great opportunity for me anyways to learn a skill that it would be very expensive to do on the outside. Right. First time I went flying, I'm flying with this old crusty uh, instructor pilot from Vietnam. And he's like, you ready? I'm like, you know, I have no idea how to fly this thing, right? And he's like, yeah, whatever. And then we just take off. And he, I wasn't even really flying. It was mainly him flying. And I'm just like shadowing him the entire time until he just, he's like, all right, man, you got it. And then I, just, I was like messing around with it, trying to figure out, like how, trying to build that muscle memory, right? It's like building that muscle memory is really important when it comes to flying helicopters, especially like hovering. It's insanely difficult. Yeah, hovering is is like the hardest thing you learn to do. It's like, oh, it's not that hard. You just keep it right here, right? Every little gust of wind, every little movement you do, the helicopters are entirely chaotic. You're chasing a power. Exactly, yeah, you're always chasing something around there. So it's like keeping it in one spot. It's kind of funny, you'd be like hovering and you'd be messing it up and this is going all crazy. And the instructor probably be like, all right, all right, all right, I'll do it again. And he would just like instantly fix it. I was like, how are you doing that, man? It was about that muscle memory. So more hours you get. Uh, maneuvers that you uh, enjoy or what this is capable of? Uh, my favorite one is always the cyclic climb breakover uh, turn, which is essentially uh, we'll, we'll dive in, into low ground, right, get real low, and then gain some airspeed as you go down, and then I'll head straight at the tree line, and right before we get to the tree line, you pull back on the cyclic, right, you gain altitude and, and trade off airspeed, right, so we slow down, we climb real fast, and then you do the reverse, you forward on the cyclic and then let the power down so you can drop back down it's kind of like you get a weightless feeling for a moment when you do that but it's a maneuver that we practice to, to uh, stay low and you have to go over an obstacle to get over it and then back down real fast but it causes like a roller coaster effect and we always yeah, yeah we always do it when we have troops in the back and they're always like we it's, it's super fun or they'll be like falling asleep and they'll be like ah and then they'll wake up yeah it's super fun <laughs> all right so back here on the back of the aircraft you know, most helicopters have a stabilator and then they have their tail rotor, right? So the biggest, you know, one of the biggest difference is like besides having the main rotor system right there, uh, you know, from a plane to a helicopter, right? Is we need our anti-torque tail rotor to keep the fuselage from spinning out of control, essentially. When the rotor blade spins one way, the fuselage is gonna spin the other way. And the way to stop that is by putting another rotor system in the back to, to push against that that torque, right? right. So it's an anti-torque rotor. Is it factor in this case or no? No, it's not. Type of yeah, it's a different kind. Uh, but the, the in layman's terms, it's producing thrust in the opposite direction that the fuselage would be spinning because of the main rotor system. And then to yaw left and right. So in an airplane, right, pedals do almost, a, like it achieves the same thing, but does it in a completely different way. Right. In a helicopter, when you hit the left pedal, at least in this helicopter with a counterclockwise uh, rotation of the blades, it actually increases the pitch of the blade so that it can produce more thrust in the, in the opposite direction, right? So that you can yaw to the left. 
so it's, it's giving more power to, to, to push, yeah, so you can yaw to the left. And then when you hit the right pedal, it takes out pitch and reduces power so that it actually yaws to the right and lets that torque factor kind of push you to the right. So that's kind of how the tail rotor works. It is canted a little bit, and the reason they do that is it produces about 2.5% of lift. Uh, for the aircraft and mainly because when we're at a hover we're very tail low yeah we're very tail low and that has to do with the stabilator as well so they put a little bit of, of uh, lift factor in the tail rotor so that you can even out the, the fuselage essentially sure. and then the stabilator if you didn't have the stabilator it'd be very hard to control the pitch of the aircraft that's all this thing does is it controls the pitch of the aircraft and mainly uh, the way it does it is when we're at a hover and we're low airspeed, it trails full down, essentially the way it is right now, so that you have more of a streamline of air going over the over the stabilator. If it was full up, it'd be pushing on it, and then your your na your nose would go way high, and you wouldn't be able to control the pitch of your aircraft. So at low airspeeds, it's down. As you gain airspeed, it automatically starts trailing up, and usually between 40 to 100 knots, it's totally flat and it's not really doing anything anymore for the most part. But then when you start slowing down, it'll start trailing down again, and it's all about controlling the pitch of the aircraft. So that's all a stabilator really does in a helicopter. But it's uh, it's very, very useful. If you didn't have it, it'd be very hard to control the, stab uh, the uh, pitch of the aircraft. Right. Yeah. All right, and that's uh, the, the generic information that I've, I have for the Blackhawk. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you all watching. I uh, want to give a big shout out to all of the aviators at uh, the 101st Cab down at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Right, so we we all are down there, uh, you know, fighting for this country and uh, doing our best to protect all you guys out there. And we really appreciate all of your support. of U.S. Classic Muscle Cars and I hope you guys enjoy this next video.